Hey guys, how you doing? Man, crypto is crashing again. This is brutal, but this isn't the end of the game. This is actually a great position to be in. So I want to explain to you, there's two things you have to think about in order to be able to notice what's happening, make the right move, and come out of this on top, and possibly a lot more than on top. So with the two things, there's one, the very easiest one, is it's good news. If you haven't sold, if you haven't had to sell, choose to sell, or felt obligated to sell, you haven't lost anything. That's simple. If we're dealing in crypto, if you're looking at your fiat portfolio balance, it may look low, and that gets painful. That's painful for everybody. But we're in crypto. You haven't lost any crypto if you haven't sold. So that's one good thing. The second good thing is you don't have to do anything. And I want you to look at the psychology of people when it, as it pertains to losing money. And take that information in, in this video. I want to explain different things that I think happen in a down market or a crashing market like we have here. So let's look at some ideas. So now we want to look at how people react when it comes to losing money, the first thing they do is they get emotional. So when you see you're losing money or value, it's not a <laughs> emotion. It's like, man, this is, pay. I need to get out of here. But what you need to do is keep a level head, be able to think logically and process what you're looking at happening in the market. And then you can prioritize this loss. So you say the world is kind of jacked up right now. Do we agree on that? I think everything's kind of bad, like the overall people and their privacy and their you know how they feel about how they get to operate in the world all of that's kind of pretty iffy right now and it doesn't feel great so prioritize something like that over you lost a couple dollars you know people that lost life you know you lost maybe some freedoms in your life maybe you lost close family members maybe you lost bigger things than a couple dollars in your investment Okay, now I'm not minimizing what your investment means to you. If you can separate real loss, like money is second to life, I would assume it is for me. I'm hoping it is for you. But it's a big gap in there. It's not close. It's a far stretch. So now this isn't that big a deal when you look at it. Winners buy when everybody's selling. When people are running for the hills is when you buy. You want to sell when everybody's running to the, the asset. So if everybody's buying it, the FOMO, rich people get rid of it then. You're buying their exit liquidity. You're giving them money to be able to get out of that position. Now you buy when everybody's running. Why? So you can get a better position. If something, if you got in Bitcoin when it started pumping and you got in at 50K, when this gets down to a 30, like it is now, you have a chance to buy in at 35 like don't rush in right now don't stop the video and go rush and buy some bitcoin right now but look at it even if you miss it and it goes back up to 40 if you bought a thousand dollars worth at 50,000 and then you buy a thousand dollars worth at 40,000 you just drop your average five thousand dollars you're at forty five thousand dollar bitcoin now so now it only has to get back to 45 before you're back in the black you get a chance to get into positions right now that you couldn't have got in before the beginning of the year or the end of last year when everybody's out of money. It's going to be hard to find money right now if you're overexposed to the market now. If you have all your money in there and you don't have any dry powder, you don't have anything to buy with, you can't sell what you have because it's so low you'll lose all your money. So you need to be able to find something right now some liquidity, some cash somewhere to put into this market. This is where the kings are made. This is where the money's made. Not when it's already pumping. They're made when it's down. So I want to pull up the Bitcoin chart real quick and just show like there's one, possibly two areas that I looked at that are similar to the quick crash that we're having right now. And I want to show you what happens right after that. We go to the Bitcoin chart. 30,000. We broke 31,000. We're on the way down. But let's zoom this in to say like somewhere up in here where we can just look a little bit. Okay. So right here, 39,000 at the top down to 30,000 where we are now. 
39 to 30 it's about nine thousand dollars on 30 on 40 25 percent dip here is a similar dip from 58 down to 37 that's 21 of 55 that's actually a 30 percent that's a slightly bigger dip but for for the sake of seeing it we're coming off of a high and then we take a 30 percent dip off that we have two months of choppiness from from may 18th to july 19th so that's almost exactly two months of chop we take the 30 percent dip we we chop going down in the downward trajectory lower lows for two months before we catch steam and go back up i think we have a little bit of consolidation so you're not in the rush to pick a play here you have time that's why i think i we have a, a time to go and then even when it starts back up if we're starting we hit the final bottom here 719 january july 19th all the way till october 19th there's three months here of climb so even after this capitulation there's no rush to make a pick if we scroll back a little bit uh if we go back a little bit, we can see other little dips like we can see a 40 percent dip probably from here nine thousand down to five thousand so even this was a 40 percent little dip it's much smaller because we are on a bigger you know scale here but even that was a long dip and it took about another two months to get back to that from march middle of march to the middle of may before we got back up to the nine thousand again so it looks like two months is is the number that it appears when you hit your bottom you have a couple months before you can worry about getting back to where you fell from just on this example and further down on this little example even same thing a sharp fast dip takes a couple months to build back a sharp fast dip takes a couple months to build back a sharp fast dip it'll take a couple months to build back so we just got to be patient okay we have to do these two things as long as you remember that i think you'll make it through this crash and any other subsequent crash after this because there will be more the sooner you get used to them and learn how to work them emotionally and financially the better off you'll be that's how kings are made here so remember the two things the first one is all good news if you don't sell you haven't lost the second one is you don't do anything take your time don't make any rash decisions and look at the psychology of people do the opposite and you're going to come out this thing smelling like roses i'd love for you to take a look at my other video bear market strategies gives you other ways to deal with this staking dollar cost averaging just buying and holding and i love it if you watch that and take a peek other than that i hope you do well keep your chin up and i hope you make some money out there i'll see you